Uh, my name is Cher Carlisle, and I am a transplant recipient. My transplant was March 2nd, 2005. Um, what brought me to speak today is having received a gift of life, um, I wanted to do something to give back to the kidney community. So I've been volunteering for the past three years on the kidney community emergency response team, the patient leadership committee for the Western Pacific Renal Network, uh, the PKD Cure Chapter, and lastly, as a volunteer for matching donors. Like everyone here whose lives have, has been touched by kidney disease, um, my family was a polycystic kidney disease family, a very small family. And uh, my father passed away from PKD back in 1982. At that time, there weren't the treatment options that there were today, there weren't the medicines that there are today. And uh, he had a pretty rough go of it. As it turned out, both my two younger brothers and myself all carried the, the, the chromosome for PKD. And my youngest brother passed away while waiting for a transplant back in 2001. He was 43 years old and the father of a nine-year-old son. My middle brother Dave and I both also had PKD and our kidneys began to fail in kind of a parallel course. Having seen my, my father pass, my youngest brother pass, and also an aunt pass, um, I kept thinking there must be some alternative to to waiting on the UNOS list for a kidney that may or may not. Like many, pe like many people, I people, I thought that the UNOS list was a lot like a bakery line or a deli line. You take your number and then one by one your number is called. And it took a lot of years and a lot of heartache before I, I learned that it wasn't quite that simple and that there were many, many medical factors and social factors that could lead to whether or not someone received a, uh, a donation of a solid organ for transplant. Um, when my brother Dave, uh, when his kidneys failed, there were several people who wanted to donate to him. They were close friends of the family, but as many of you have found that during the testing, none of them uh, were able to be a match. Either they were an antigen and, and a good cross match with some other complication down the road, some kind of abnormality or uh, within, within their kidneys and the kidney structures, or they were not a tissue match. Um, I was very active in trying to put the word out for my brother Dave, who is the father of three, plus he and his wife were raising the son of our brother who passed away, so they had four young boys. I put the word out everywhere I could at my workplace, which was Chiron Corporation, now Novartis, which makes one of the immunosuppressants that a lot of us take. Um, and although, although there were a lot of loving hearts and well wishes, no one could come forward. Um, eventually, there was somebody who became my brother's kidney donor. She was a young woman named Brianne Austin. And she was what I call his miracle maker. And uh, she did donate a kidney to him in December of 04. But at the point that that occurred, my brother had a non-working fistula and was he who'd been a triathlete was about 130 pounds, five foot 11 guy. A lot of that weight was, was polycystic kidney disease. So I thought I was about to lose my second brother, but this, this transplant came through in what we would call the, the nick of time. And during this time, I had forgotten that I was getting pretty sick myself. My kidneys were failing as well. But you know, my, my thing was, I was just saying, God, if you just save my brother, I don't care what happens to me. And uh, and that was my thinking. But I started to feel pretty darn crummy, and I'd already put the word out to my friends in my loving circle of friends and family, and there was no one who really could be a donor for me. Either they didn't want to be, or they couldn't be, or they had health complications of their own, or young children, or families who, who might not agree with that particular choice. So one day when I was, my uh, creatinine was pretty high, and I was nauseous and anemic, and just sitting in front of a computer, Computer going, okay, is this what my life's going to be? I put in two words into a search engine, and those two words were donor and match. And then up popped this website, uh, www.matchingdonors.com. When I looked at it, the first thing I thought is, 
this has got to be a scam, you know, taking advantage of desperate, miserable kidney patients like myself who, you know, wanted to do something. And I thought, well, it looks like a scam, but I really don't know if it is a scam. So one day, I, I was quite broke at the time because I had not been able to work anymore, and I plopped down um, money on the credit card and joined Matching Donors. About two weeks after I joined, I started getting some responses, but they seemed very insincere. There were a couple people who offered me money, who were, who were writing from far, far away places. So I called up Matching Donors, pretty irate, asked to speak to the CEO, and I said to them, you know, I think you guys are a scam. I want my money back. Um, I really want to go sign up in another re region, and I need that money to go sign up at UCLA because I figured my chances of receiving a transplant might be better if I sign up in more than one region, and I need that money to drive down to UCLA and uh, get down there. So please give me my money back. And they said, okay, okay, we're going to give you your money back, everything but one penny. I said, what? They go, we want to keep your profile, your picture and your profile on the site. We just want to do this for you. Just keep it on the site. I thought, where are they coming from? What does that mean? They, this sounds pretty fishy, but I also, another part of me thought, well, why not go with the flow and see what happens? So I did. I said, okay, just return my money to my credit card. You can leave my profile up on the site, and then we'll see about this. In the meantime, I went down to UCLA but wasn't able to complete signing up in the region. This was um, September of 04. Within, uh, within about three to four weeks, I received three serious inquiries. One was from a school teacher in Ohio. One was from someone in the high-tech industry in Seattle. Um, and there was a third. And upon receipt of those inquiries, which were email, at this point, just email correspondence. In maybe one case, we conversed on the phone. I said, okay, I'll send you my donor information packet from my hospital, which is, was the San Francisco hospital, and then see what happens. Of those three, no one, no one took it a step farther. But during the same week, I got an email inquiry from a young woman in her 30s. I was in my 40s at the time. I'm in my 50s now in Colorado who expressed an interest in being my donor. And we began a rather short email correspondence between October and November 04. December 2nd, 04, my brother Dave, who some of you may know has subsequently founded the pair donation software for CPMC called Matchmaker. My brother Dave received it, was about to receive his kidney from Brian Austin. And I said to my donor, potential donor, I said, you know, my brother's receiving a transplant. I'd love to have you come up. Uh, I know by law I'm only allowed to pay for transportation, food, meal, or missed works for you. And I really don't have a lot of money, but let me see if we can have, you know, have an opportunity to meet in person. So she came up. Um, she came up in person. When I think we got a really low airfare on Frontier Airlines. And she wanted to cover her own meals. And she went and met Brian, my brother's donor, while Brian was in the hospital, hooked up to IV pain medicine after my brother's transplant. But Brian, at that point, spoke to Sally and said she had no regrets and she was really glad she did this. By the way, Brian and Dave were the first African American female to Caucasian white, Caucasian male transplant to take place at at our hospital, CPMC. And a lot of people couldn't understand this. They kept thinking, well, what's the incentive? And theirs is another miraculous story, which I'll save since we don't have time for that. And I want to kind of wind this up and keep it brief for you. But there's another miracle story there. And that very day, after visiting Brianna in the hospital, and I was in that state of gratitude because my brother had a kidney and I was just happy as with life as it was. Sally said, well, I'd like, to, I'd like to really test for you. I said, Sally, it takes weeks to get testing set up at the hospital. I go, that's really nice, but, but there's no way we could do it. She said, no, you know, I'm going to walk over to the donor coordinator. So she walked across the building, and for whatever reason, they agreed to test her. And within a week or so, I learned that we were a four out of six antigen match. I still kind of get chills over that. Sally completed the testing of everything, you know, the 
treadmill test and the x-ray test and you know, all the kinds of tests you need, tests to see if there's any uh, diseases in your body. And, and then I, I'm, maybe a doctor can help me with the name. I think it's called a CT anteriogram, uh, the scan that looks at the blood flow of the donor's two kidneys and their anatomical structure to make sure they're <coughs> in great shape because you can never, um, there's no way that you ever want to harm a potential donor's body by taking out a kidney when their other kidney isn't working optimally. But Sally was um, healthy in every respect. Our transplant took place, as I said, on March 2nd. And it was successful. Uh, the typical medical side effects that a lot of people do get after transplant, you know, a lot of ups and downs. but. Uh, I received a gift of life, and about that time, I decided I wanted to give this back to other people. So I've been volunteering for Matching Donors purely as a volunteer, letting people know about this as an alternative. It's not for everyone. Um, since me, I was the first person in California and the sixth person in the nation. As of last week, there have been 90 transplants. There's actually been more, but some were three-way pairs with Johns Hopkins. So uh, I, that's, they're basically just counting each pair, each as a pair, even if it was a three-way pair. I, at this point, I know the founder very well. I know other patients who've received transplants, some of, them, some of whom are also wanting to share this as, an, as a potential option. And in the back on the table, I put my story, my little story, on altruistic living donation. You can read it if you run out. I only put a few down there, but if someone needs it, you can um, contact me through Linda. Or I also put these little blue cards, which I printed up this morning. And if you're interested in joining Matching Donors, I can help you go through that process and tell you what's involved with the picture and your profile. It's very much for real. It's very much growing in acceptance by hospitals across the nation. It's taken a couple years, but now there are more hospitals that accept donor matches of this nature than there are that not. And the last thing I wanted to add, which is not specifically about matching donors, but my brother Dave, who's kind of come back to life and raising his four kids, he's continuing to work with our hospital, completely separate, has nothing to do with matching donors, but he's helped the, create the software uh, that is increasing pair donation between families. And I actually see one person in this audience who has been part of a pair through Matchmaker at CPMC. So I just want to let you know there are some options out there. There are some new things that may seem untested, but I'd be happy to share any details. And I take calls from people all over the country. I'd be happy to speak with any of you at, at your convenience if you need more information. That's, that's my story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. They're, they're actually working on trying to get some very large corporate grants, so in the future the patients won't have to pay the membership. But I can tell you, compared to the 20000 made by Oregon procur Procurement Networks, it's very, very small. You know, of the 20000 about 7000 is for harvesting, procuring, and testing organs at, in the UNOS world, which is fine. We, of course, we need it all. Uh, but they're working on that. Um, they do make financial hardship exceptions. I've known of many to, of those to occur. But they're asking people who can't afford it to pay the membership. They, they run their website. They do a lot of good deeds. They're, they have angel flights for some of the patients. Um, when they have their transplants, and they're really good guys, and they're, you know, they're really good guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah.